What the hell are you doing? I'm just worshipping at the shrine of the wizard. Welcome back to our channel everyone, Spin and Prog. So today we are going to be doing the classic era of Uriah Heep. As we can see the fabulous myth box is here behind us. The wizard. Hmm. Yeah, we, uh, we had the good fortune of seeing the heap last year, didn't we? We, uh, we went to Manchester in the UK and we did the double. So over two nights we had Steve Hackett one night and Uriah Heap the next night, which was uh, quite an experience. And I have to say, Tara went insane. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what went wrong. She ran down the front of the stage. Uh, the photograph here is uh, one that she took of Mick Box <laughs> right in front of her and you can see she also managed to get her hands on one of their plectrums as well so uh, very good Tara, very very well done. Yes. Not not anything that one would be ashamed of with their daughter and her behaviour <laughs> when you go into a concert. So um, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> my my experience with Jeremiah Heap anyway goes back a long, long time, and um, I love them. I think they always had this kind of um, um, how can I put it? There's there's a kind of a balance between mm. heaviness and a slight progginess with this yeah, band, yeah, yeah, uh, which is brilliant. And I love that sometimes they lean a little bit towards the theatrical in in the music. Which is what sucked me in, of course. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all their albums. Uh, well, not all their albums, but we're going to go through a fantastic run that they had. Now, it's very few bands that you could say had five albums in a row that were brilliant. Right. Yeah, yeah, and Uriah Heep are one of those bands that we can say that. So, we're going to look at that time and we're going to go a little bit beyond just those five albums as well to what... I suppose both of us would feel is the end of classic era heap. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to start with the first album, which is very heavy, very humble, named after your right. Birmingham, 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 very heavy, yes, very yes, humble. Yes, yes. yes, I'm sorry about the state of the cover, it's pretty wrecked, but uh, <laughs> as you might gather, it's one of the originals that came out in 1969. So, um, yeah, what do you want to say about this one, Tara? This is a hard hitter for a first, I think, anyway. Uh, it starts off with Gypsy. Uh, absolutely fantastic song, really gets you going. And for the prog lovers, Ken Hensley comes in on his Hammond organ in the middle of it. And then Mick Box comes back in with his guitar and oh, just beautiful. Mm. Just a great album overall for for their first album as well. Like, yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a very uh, strong first album when I think uh, 1969, your first album. Uh, yes, did their first album in 1969 as well. And I actually think this is a stronger album. Yeah, for a first, absolutely. Yes, so, uh, I think they kind of found their feet very quickly in their style. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, one of the amazing things about this is there's a lot of kind of different styles that blend mm. across the album. I believe they were originally called Spice because they had a little bit of everything in the, in the mix when they, <laughs> when they played. And you can kind of feel that in this album. There's bits of blues, bits of rock, yeah, kind of yeah. proggy bits, folky bits, mm. all sorts in it. Uh, but it does work quite well. Absolutely fantastic band of musicians mm. okay so up next we have salisbury 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 uh first of all this cover is brilliant i love it like. i love the cover myself <laughs> i remember seeing <laughs> it somewhere inside, and wanted. Of course, like, <laughs> um, i feel this is where they started to get really proggy um there's an epic track on it a big long one and yeah i mean second album it just keeps going like the the power just doesn't stop through the first album and this album it's just like brilliant yeah keeps it going so yeah i can't even say that else. it's just amazing listen to it yeah 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 <laughs> the uh, the title track on it actually is is the epic piece that you're talking about and um it's 16 minutes 22 seconds long and it it's the only epic that i've ever heard that has a groove to Mm. It kind of goes along yeah, in this kind actually, of yeah. nice groove and it goes fantastically. There, 
there's uh, brass brass on this there's all sorts of stuff on it this is a really interesting pro uh, album and it's very proggy and some days it's my favourite Uriah mm. album yeah. you know I can't, I can't say really that about movie very movie. heavy very humble but I can say it about this some days this is my favourite Uriah album and I love to come stop looking at me like that <laughs> that's terrible so now, there, look at yourself. Something that you do quite a lot of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carrying on. Although you can't see much in this mirror. I think no. it's even better days. Yeah, yeah, I can see something in there. <laughs> um, I'll start this one off then. Yeah. This is an amazing one. This is... To me now, kind of more consistently, this is kind of my number one. Yeah. Uriah Heap album. Title track, Look at Yourself. Absolutely killer stuff. Uh, July Morning, epic piece of music. Fantastic. David Byron is really kind of coming into his so own on good. this album. So you can see there's a kind of a, there, there's a cohesion coming between Mick Box's playing, Ken Hensley's playing, and... Uh, David Byrne's lead vocals on this album <clears throat> it's absolutely astounding um, love it all tears in my eyes mm -hmm. Every, oh, just fabulous album Tara what do you want to say about it I feel the exact same it's brilliant and July Morning is probably one of my top tracks by the Heap as well yeah yeah. yeah it is it's one of those great songs yeah. but uh, then we come to where they move into the more uh fantasy here. Yeah. So Tara, do you want to take that thing? This is when Roger Dean comes in and does the cover. As we can see, it's Roger Dean. It's absolutely amazing, of course. So this is where the theatrical team comes in that Dad was talking about at the start. Um, you have the story of the, the wizard starts to come in and, you know, they kind of start to go into acoustic -y songs and, mm. you know, a uh, poetry kind of lyrics by David Byron but it's really good like and uh, as someone with a crazy kind of imagination like myself I absolutely love this one mm -hmm. and this is what really started to pull me into the heap and made me want to discover more from, from them so yeah absolutely love this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah and what I would say about it is uh, I mean track wise we've got let's see now I'll have to pull out the thing showing my age yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. So um, yeah Circle of Hands, Easy Living, oh, I mean great Peace. rocking number yeah. Rainbow Demon, The Spell, Paradise she kept asking me at the at the <laughs> at the concert we were at every time they'd start to so, is that rainbow demon is that rainbow demon that, you know? this because the cat just bailed it yeah that's terrible uh, yeah absolutely amazing amazing album I would find the lyrics like Tara said you know you could read it as fantasy but I, c I can also read somebody who's trapped in a kind of a very unhappy relationship in this because okay, the person is kind of trapped by the wizard mm. and uh, has to get out from under the control of the wizard yeah. and uh, there's a lot that kind of goes on like that Actually, yeah, I have experience don't worry yeah. okay okay right right uh, I'll leave you go with this one Tara go ahead so this is my favourite album by your idea my favourite one of my favourite Roger Dean covers of all time too Absolutely gorgeous. So this is where they really start to incorporate that theatrical team with the rock and roll and proggy side of music. Uh, it kicks off with Sunrise, which is a brilliant song, and David Byron's voice. It, it just, it, oh my God! Like it's it's like Ian uh, Ian Gillen. Yeah. Like it's absolutely fantastic, and yeah, yeah great story throughout the album. And it ends on the magician's birthday, which is absolutely insane. And Mick Box has like a battle with the the magician. Is it the magician or the wizard? It's the the magician. wizard is the evil one. <laughs> it's, it, look, it's it's a crazy album, but it's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say this is a uh, you know they recorded this and Demons and Wizards in the same year. Uh, and uh, I mean, they're like two sides of the same album, 
basically. Yeah. You know, um, Sunrise, um, let's see what else is on this, The Magician Spirit of Sweet Lorraine, etc, etc. But there's absolutely, every track on here is fantastic, as it with is, Demons yeah, and Wizards, yeah, yeah. you know, so the two of them, I would say, you've kind of hit the creative high point to this band mm -hmm. with these two albums. And, you know, getting Roger Dean involved and everything is kind of them almost stating this. This is us being our artistic, at our artistic zenith with these albums, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, yeah, fantastic albums. And then, uh, to follow it up, we have uh, the live album, which I reckon to be one of the greatest live albums ever recorded. I absolutely, somebody lent me this when I was about 15. And uh, I remember I just couldn't take it off the turntable. And it was after listening to this that I had to find all the albums that all the songs were off. Yeah. So, you know, we've got Sunrise, Sweet Lorraine, Traveller in Time, Easy Living, July Morning, Tears in My Eyes, Gypsy, Circle of Hands, uh, The Magician's Birthday, the famous rock and roll medley that they used to do at the end. Absolutely mind blowing album. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah that's um, yours. To, you own that one, don't you? I do. Yeah. So <laughs> I heard it for the first time not long ago at all. Dad, we kept going to our local record shop, the Bunker in Cork. Shout out to John at the Bunker. We love John. And uh, <laughs> I kept seeing it there, and Dad kept going, Tara, you have to get that. You have to get that. I'm telling you, you have to. So I, I was like, okay, okay, I will, I will. I got it, and I had it on, and I. Not once was I like, oh, like, Jesus. The whole time through, I was just like, oh, I wish I was there. I wish I was there. So, yeah, it's it's definitely one of the best live albums I've ever heard as well, to be honest with you. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and I would make the point that even though we're talking about the golden era of Uriah Heap, they're still a pretty good band to see live. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, for their age. And the people that they have in that band now, the musicians are fantastic Brilliant. quality. And when we saw them live, some of the more recent songs even were quite interesting songs as well that stood up very well with the older stuff. So uh, big respect to Mick Box and the guys in the band. Like, they're still fantastic. Yeah, and they seem to be on the road all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, you're definitely going to get the opportunity. If you get a chance, go, go and see him. I'm going to see him again this year, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, can't wait for that one. Yeah. I'll be, I won't be. won't be with Tara this time. Oh, it's terrible. I might actually get a chance to actually enjoy it rather than worrying about her jumping up and down at the front of the stage. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the next album we don't have a physical copy of. No. Which is Sweet Freedom. Yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't spotted it yet in any record shops. Um, and I didn't really know much about it until Dad brought up this video. And, you know, I was saying, oh, what's, what would be the considered the classic era? And he said... Sweet Freedom is part of it. We've got to listen to it. So we listened to it digitally. We streamed it. And... Bit of cheating, you know, compared to our usual. Yes, sorry, guys. Carry on. But, uh, what do I say? I just, I felt like it was a bit anticlimactic. Uh, you know, it comes after The Magician's Birthday and the live album and everything. And it was just like... You know, you were waiting for something to happen. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good description of it. Uh, there's some good tracks on it. Stealing is great. Wonderful number that they do live. The title track, Sweet Freedom, is very good. Uh, excellent track. Uh, and Pilgrim is yeah, pretty good. I enjoyed good. all those tracks. And it's not, don't get us wrong, this isn't a bad album. Mm. Uh, but it is actually them pulling back from where they'd gone. Yeah. yeah. So they'd kind of reached this great kind of... Um, fantastic era of music with those previous two albums that they've done yeah. and I would say look at look at yourself and Salisbury and all these sorts mm. of things uh, but this was definitely kind of coming down the other side yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. so we do have to get to oh. <laughs> I was in a friend's house one night and, uh, when I was a teenager and I was going through his record collection, I came across this and said, oh, Uriah Heep. And he said, if you want it, you can have it. That's always a bad indication of something. This album, in my opinion, is terrible. Yeah. 
It's absolutely terrible. Um, there's actually a song on here that says, I'm so tired and I'm so uninspired, is the lyric. And I believe that was actually what was going on with the album. I love the cover. The cover is cool, yeah. With the statues and then we had the band on. Uh, but uh, no, absolutely, I would not recommend <laughs> And he won't invest any time and money in this album. If somebody out there likes it, well and good. These are just their opinions, you know. So, um, yeah, the rest of them, great. Now, I've included this in the list because uh, this album comes after it, which is Return to Fantasy. Uh, again, a friend of mine <laughs> gave me this when I was a teenager. Uh, I put it on. I was absolutely astounded. Um, side one of this album is amazing. absolutely amazing. Amazing, like. Uh, by this time, uh, sadly, Gary Kane had passed away, and um, he was replaced by John Wetton on this album. Uh, I think Gary Kane was like one of the unsung greats in yeah. the bass guitar. Yeah. He was absolutely astounding. So underrated. And it would take John Wetton to fill in for what he done with the band. Um, this is uh, side one of this album is incredible. I remember putting it on Return to Fantasy, Shady Lady, Devil's Daughter, Beautiful Dream. Beautiful Dream. Just absolutely <laughs> astounding. And uh, it's like the soundtrack to a hammer horror. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's absolutely amazing. I think with the title to Return to Fantasy, uh, it's uh, it's it's talking about return you know to returning to. The, uh, magician's the, the, the magician's birthday, birthday yeah. you know, demons and wizards uh, time. Although it's kind of not really a return to there, it's actually uh, something kind of adjacent to it, but it's not exactly the same. I remember uh, my friend, he said, oh, he said, have you right? Hey, pal, do you want it? And I said, what's on the cover? And he said, there's a ballerina strapped to a burning ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a description but there you go yeah so that's Return to Fantasy what do you think of it there? again side one you put it on and you're just the whole way through you're like like but you turn it over and it's like what happened where did mm. the where did the energy go where did the the power go like yeah. it just it's very like what what are you doing lads like, yeah it's like it goes to Wonderworld on side two yeah you know, so uh, yeah, so that's uh, after that they brought out High and Mighty, uh, which was again a downturn once again, uh, which uh, finished off the David Byron year with the band, and then they kind of went into the uh, wilderness for some time before reinventing themselves in the early eighties as a kind of a metal mm. band, a kind of new wave British heavy metal band somehow. Uh, and you know they've always kind of kept themselves going like that so I really respect them but I would say of these albums that we've just looked at I would say um, really if you take anything from very heavy very humble up until uh, the magician's birthday you've got fantastic stuff to listen consistent, to consistent <laughs> consistent oh my god <laughs> of course yeah and, and a fantastic double live album that's in there as well yeah uh if somebody wanted to start with Heap, I'd recommend to start with the live album, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. or... Uh, or if know, you're a total weirdo like me, jump into The Magician's Birthday. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say the studio album to start with would be uh, Look At Yourself. Mm. I, I just think that's a really rounded album that gives a look at all the kind of different aspects of Heap coming yeah. together. So, yeah. yeah. And can I just say, David Byron, how underrated is that man mm. as a vocalist he was so talented yeah and such such a pity him and gary tain passed away so young yes yeah um but i wish the two of them had a bit more recognition like they're yeah. amazing yeah well i think the heap should have been up there with the greats of that time yeah. um I, and something i noticed about him when we went to see uh steve hackett and uriah heap was steve hackett was very kind of middle class bourgeoisie uh, audience and Uriah Heap was very blue collar Yeah, and I think it might be something to do with that that they're kind of looked down on a little bit when they shouldn't be absolutely, absolutely yeah, astounding yeah. band 
so yeah go off explore uh contact us let us know what your favorite uriah heat moments are albums songs anything that you'd like to talk mm. about is there another era of heap that maybe we should be looking at as well that we're yeah. not really looking at so uh, please feel free to engage with us in the comments and uh, let us know what you think. And a shout out to A Pocket Full of Heap as well, our, our great friend on YouTube who yeah. has them in his name because they are so good. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, so give us a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. And we'll see you in the next one. Yep. Yeah, all the best. Bye-bye.